Zinch, the changer of ways, stands as a testament to the infinite possibilities and the relentless march of change that permeates existence itself. Zinch is not merely a god or a concept, but the embodiment of evolution, ambition, and the inexorable flow of time. Imagine a realm where thought becomes reality, where dreams and nightmares coalesce into tangible forms, and where the boundaries between past, present, and future blur into an incomprehensible maelstrom. This is the domain of Tsinch, a kaleidoscopic nightmare of ever-shifting landscapes and impossible geometries. Within this realm, plans within plans unfold, each more intricate and far-reaching than the last, forming a web of machinations that spans millennia and transcends the barriers between dimensions. Zinch's influence seeps into every corner of the galaxy, from the grandest empires to the humblest of minds. It is the whisper of ambition in the ear of a lowly scribe, the spark of innovation in a tech priest's revelation, and the creeping paranoia that haunts the dreams of planetary governors. The changer of ways revels in the upheaval of the status quo, in the toppling of established orders, and in the relentless pursuit of knowledge, no matter how forbidden or dangerous. Yet, to view Tsinch solely as a force of chaos would be a grave misunderstanding. The architect of fate embodies both creation and destruction, progress and regression, hope and despair. It is the patron of sorcerers and scholars, of revolutionaries and visionaries, those who seek to unravel the mysteries of the universe or to reshape reality according to their will often find themselves drawn into Tsinch's orbit, willingly or not. The followers of Tsinch are as diverse as they are enigmatic. From the ranks of the Thousand Suns, a legion of space marines who traded their humanity for arcane power, to the cults that flourish in the underbellies of hive cities, each servant of the Changer of Ways plays a part in a grand design beyond mortal comprehension. These acolytes wield sorceries capable of reshaping matter, bending the fabric of space-time, and peering into futures yet to unfold. But the true nature of Tsinch remains an enigma, even to its most devoted followers. Is it a singular entity of unfathomable power, or a collective consciousness born from the psychic emanations of countless races? Does it truly have a grand plan, or is it simply the embodiment of change itself, acting without purpose or direction? These questions have driven many to madness in their pursuit of understanding. The Imperium of Man, in its ignorance and fear, sees Tsinch as nothing more than another face of chaos, a threat to be purged with fire and faith. Yet, even as they fight against its influence, they unknowingly further its agenda. Every technological advancement, every shift in doctrine, every revolution or reformation within the Imperium's stagnant structure serves the changer of ways. As we delve deeper into the lore of Tsinch, we must prepare ourselves for a journey that will challenge our perceptions of reality and morality. We will explore the intricate web of plots and counterplots that define its existence, the beings that serve as its agents, and the cataclysmic events that have shaped the galaxy under its influence. From the fall of the Eldar to the Horus heresy, from the birth of the Eye of Terror to the myriad schemes unfolding in the 41st millennium, Tsinch's hand can be seen guiding events from the shadows. Its motivations remain inscrutable, its end game a mystery that even the most prescient seers cannot unravel. As we embark on this exploration of Tsinch, the architect of fate, we must remember that knowledge is power, but it is also a double-edged sword. In seeking to understand the unfathomable, we risk losing ourselves to the very madness we seek to comprehend. Yet, it is this pursuit of knowledge, this desire to unravel the mysteries of existence, that drives humanity forward and perhaps plays directly into Tsinch's grand design. Prepare yourselves, for we are about to peer into the abyss of infinite possibility, where reality itself is mutable and the only constant is change. Welcome to the realm of Tsinch, where yesterday's certainties become tomorrow's illusions, and the future is an ever-shifting kaleidoscope of potential. In the cosmic chess game orchestrated by Tsinch, 
A myriad of players move across the board, each fulfilling roles both known and unknown. At the forefront stand the Thousand Sons, once proud warriors of the Emperor, now twisted sorcerers bound to the Changer of Ways. Led by their enigmatic Primarch, Magnus the Red, these fallen space marines embody the pursuit of forbidden knowledge and the corruption that follows. Their ranks swell with powerful psychers and demonic entities, each a conduit for Tsinch's reality-warping energies. Opposing the forces of change, the Imperium of Man stands as a bulwark against the tides of chaos. Within its vast apparatus, the Inquisition's Ordo Malleus takes center stage in the fight against demonic incursions. These tireless agents seek to root out Tsinch's influence, often employing methods as arcane and secretive as those they hunt. Alongside them, the Grey Knights chapter serves as the Emperor's ultimate weapon against chaos, their silver armor a beacon of hope in the face of mind-bending horrors. The Eldar, ancient and inscrutable, play a complex role in Sinch's grand design. Their farseers peer into possible futures, their actions often aligning with or opposing the Changer's schemes, sometimes unknowingly. The Harlequins, enigmatic performers of the Eldar race, dance along the threads of fate, their intricate performances echoing the labyrinthine plots of Tsinch itself. Deep within the bowels of hive cities and frontier worlds, cults dedicated to Tsinch flourish in the shadows. These mortal devotees range from lowly mutants to high-ranking officials, each seeking to curry favor with their capricious god. Their activities span from subtle manipulation of local politics to grand rituals capable of tearing reality asunder. The Chaos God's influence extends even to the material realm's most unlikely corners. Rogue tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus, seduced by the promise of innovation unbound by dogma, turn their augmented minds to unlocking the secrets of the warp. Their unholy creations blur the line between technology and sorcery, embodying Tsinch's domain over both progress and mutation. Among the demonic legions, lords of change reign supreme as Tsinch's greatest servants. These avian monstrosities possess intellects rivaling the greatest mortal minds, their every action part of schemes spanning millennia. Beneath them, horrors writhe and split, physical manifestations of magic itself, while flamers and screamers carry out their master's will across battle-scarred worlds. The disciples of Tsinch, mortal champions elevated by their patron's fickle favor, stand as living conduits of change. Sorcerers of unparalleled might, they weave spells that defy the laws of physics and sanity alike. Each bears mutations reflecting Tsinch's gifts, their forms as mutable as their ambitions. Unexpected allies emerge in Sench's eternal game. Renegade inquisitors, their minds open to truths beyond imperial dogma, sometimes find themselves unwittingly serving the architect of fate. Their actions, meant to safeguard humanity, often sow the seeds of upheaval and transformation. The Necrons, ancient adversaries of the Old Ones, intersect with Sinch's schemes in curious ways. Their Cryptex, masters of hyper-advanced technology, sometimes stumble upon knowledge that resonates with the Changer's domain, creating nexus points where science and sorcery collide. Orc weird boys, conduits for the psychic energy of their race, occasionally tap into currents of power that bear Tsinch's mark. The resulting chaos spreads through orc society like wildfire, spawning new beliefs and technologies that reshape entire wax. Gene stealer cults, while primarily servants of the Tyranid hive mind, can fall under Tsinch's sway. The promise of transcendence and evolution proves irresistible to some cult leaders, leading to hybrid organizations that serve both the Star Children and the Lord of Change. The Tao Empire with its rapid technological advancement and expansion, unwittingly plays into Tsanche's hands. Their pursuit of the greater good creates ripples in the warp, offering new avenues for the god of change to exploit. Rogue traders traversing the fringes of known space often become unwitting pawns in Tsanche's games. 
Their discoveries of lost human colonies or Xenos artifacts can trigger chain reactions of events that reshape entire sectors. Within the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, some astropaths find their powers growing beyond Imperial control. These individuals, their minds opened to the Immaterium's secrets, become focal points for Sinch's influence in the vital networks of galactic communication. Even the Officio Assassinorum is not immune to Tsinch's touch. Certain operatives exposed to warp-tainted targets or esoteric knowledge may find their skills and purpose twisted to serve a new master. The Chaos God's reach extends to Xenos races long forgotten by the Imperium. Coral savant administrators and hrood chrono scavengers alike find their unique perspectives on time and space aligning with Sinch's fluid nature. Navigators, their third eyes permanently fixed on the warp's roiling tides, sometimes glimpse patterns in the madness that drive them to seek deeper truths. These individuals become unwitting agents of change, their altered courses rippling through imperial space. In this vast tapestry of players, each thread intertwines with countless others, forming a design of staggering complexity. Tsinch's influence touches all, from the mightiest warriors to the lowliest scribes, each playing their part in an eternal dance of transformation and revelation. The genesis of Tsinch's dominion over change and sorcery stretches back to the dawn of sentience in the galaxy. As nascent species first grasped the concept of tomorrow differing from today, the seeds of the changer of ways were sown. This embryonic God consciousness fed on the hopes, fears, and ambitions of countless races growing in power and complexity with each passing millennium. The war in heaven marked a crucial juncture in Zinch's ascension. As the Old Ones and Necrontier battled across the stars, their conflict spawned psychic disturbances of unprecedented magnitude. The creation of the Webway and the birth of new psychic races further destabilized the Immaterium creating a maelstrom of raw potential that Tsinch's emerging consciousness eagerly absorbed. The fall of the Eldar Empire provided another massive surge of psychic energy. As their civilization crumbled under the weight of excess, the psychic backlash reverberated through the warp. Tsinch, ever opportunistic, channeled this tumultuous energy to further its own schemes, using the catastrophe as a catalyst for new plots and manipulations. Humanity's evolution into a psychic race played a pivotal role in Sinch's plans. The Age of Strife saw human psychers emerge in great numbers, their untrained minds becoming beacons in the warp. Sinch whispered promises of power and knowledge to these fledgling psychers, laying the groundwork for future corruption. The Emperor's Great Crusade, ironically, served Sinch's purposes. As humanity spread across the galaxy, it brought change and upheaval to countless worlds. The Imperium's actions created a psychic wake in the warp, a churning sea of possibility that Sinch gleefully navigated. Magnus the Red's fateful bargain with Sinch to save his legion marked a turning point. This pact not only secured the Thousand Sons as agents of change, but also set in motion events that would lead to the Horus Heresy. Sinch's manipulation of Magnus exemplified its modus operandi, offering salvation with one hand while sowing the seeds of destruction with the other. The Horus heresy itself was a masterpiece of manipulation, with Sinch playing a subtle yet crucial role. By exploiting the ambitions and fears of key players, the changer of ways ensured that the conflict would reshape the galaxy. The psychic trauma inflicted upon humanity during this time resonated through the warp, further empowering Tsinch and its fellow Chaos Gods. In the aftermath of the heresy, the Imperium's descent into technological and cultural stagnation created new opportunities for Tsinch. The suppression of knowledge and innovation drove curious minds to seek forbidden lore, often leading them into the Changer's embrace. Sinch reveled in the irony of a galaxy-spanning empire inadvertently pushing its citizens towards chaos in its attempt to resist it. The birth of the Great Rift marked another pivotal moment in Zinch's ascendancy. As reality tore asunder, new pathways opened between the material realm and the warp. 
Sinch's influence seeped through these cracks, touching worlds previously insulated from chaos. The resulting upheaval spawned countless new schemes and plots, each a thread in the god's ever-expanding web of manipulation. The rubric of Aramin, while intended to save the Thousand Sons from mutation, played perfectly into Zinch's hands. The spell's catastrophic outcome bound the Legion even more tightly to their patron, creating the Rubric Marines and elevating Aramin to the status of Arch Sorcerer. This event showcased Zinch's ability to turn apparent setbacks into long-term advantages. The rise of the Tau Empire presented Zinch with a new vector for change. Their rapid technological advancement and expansion created ripples in the galaxy's status quo. Zinch saw in the Tau's philosophy of the greater good a potential tool for further manipulation, subtly influencing their path to serve its own ends. The awakening of the Necrons introduced an element of unpredictability that Zinch relished. As these ancient warriors emerged from stasis, their actions disrupted carefully laid plans across the galaxy. Zinch adapted swiftly, incorporating the Necrons' return into new, more complex schemes. The continuous conflict between the Imperium and various Xenos races provided a constant source of change and psychic turbulence. Each war, each shifting alliance, each technological breakthrough fueled Sinch's power. The god thrived on the ebb and flow of galactic politics, often working behind the scenes to prolong conflicts or spark new ones. The proliferation of Genestealer cults across Imperial worlds created unexpected opportunities for Zinch. As these cults spread, they weakened the fabric of Imperial society, making it more susceptible to other forms of corruption. Zinch's agents often found common cause with Genestealer cultists, forming unholy alliances that served both the Tyranid hive mind and the Lord of Change. The cyclical invasions of chaos forces from the Eye of Terror and the Maelstrom served as grand experiments for Zinch. Each Black Crusade was an opportunity to test new strategies, unleash new sorceries, and observe the Imperium's responses. The long-term data gathered from these incursions informed Zinch's future machinations. As psychic awakening swept across the galaxy, Zinch's influence grew exponentially. The surge in psychic potential among various races created a feast of opportunity for the changer of ways. New cults arose, hidden knowledge was uncovered, and the barriers between reality and the warp grew ever thinner. Throughout these millennia of scheming and manipulation, Zainch's ultimate goal remained as inscrutable as ever. Was the changer of ways working towards some grand design, or simply reveling in the act of change itself. This fundamental mystery continued to drive both its followers and enemies to new heights of ambition and paranoia, further feeding the cycle of change that Zinch embodied. The unfolding saga of Zinch's influence across the millennia is a tapestry woven with threads of deception, revelation, and metamorphosis. Each era brings new chapters to this cosmic narrative, with pivotal events reshaping the galaxy's destiny. In the aftermath of the Horus Heresy, the Thousand Suns Legion, now fully embraced by Zinch, established their new stronghold on the planet of sorcerers. This transdimensional realm became a nexus of arcane energies, where reality bent to the whims of its inhabitants. From this bastion, the Sons of Magnus launched countless incursions into real space, each sortie a calculated move in Sainche's grand game. The Council of Nakia's decree against Psykers inadvertently played into the Changer's hands. As the Imperium suppressed psychic abilities, those with latent talents often found themselves drawn to forbidden knowledge, seeking understanding and power. This oppression created a fertile ground for Tsinch's cults to flourish in the shadows of hive cities and frontier worlds alike. The Age of Apostasy marked a period of intense upheaval within the Imperium. As the Ecclesiarchy's power grew unchecked, Zinch's agents worked tirelessly to exacerbate the corruption and paranoia gripping human worlds. The eventual reforms that followed this tumultuous time reshaped Imperial governance, creating new avenues for subtle manipulation. 
The unleashing of the curse of the Wolfen among the Space Wolves served as a stark reminder of Tsinch's long memory and patient vengeance. This affliction, a legacy of the Thousand Suns' bitter rivalry with the VI Legion, demonstrated the Changer's ability to turn even the most stalwart defenders of the Imperium against themselves. The 13th Black Crusade saw Tsinch's forces play a crucial role in the fall of Kadia. Sorcerers of the Thousand Suns worked in concert with other Chaos factions, their eldritch powers tearing reality asunder. The destruction of this linchpin world set in motion a chain of events that would reshape the galaxy for millennia to come. The Psychic Awakening heralded a new era of opportunity for Tsench. As latent psychers emerged across countless worlds, the Changer's influence spread like wildfire. Entire populations found themselves beset by visions and phenomena beyond their comprehension, creating a psychic maelstrom that fed directly into Tsinch's domain. The Cicatrix Maledictum's formation marked a watershed moment in galactic history. This great tear in reality allowed Tsinch's influence to seep into regions previously insulated from the warp's touch. Worlds on the edge of this vast warp storm became battlegrounds where reality itself was a contested resource. The wars of fate, waged across multiple dimensions, saw Tsinch's forces clash with those of its rival gods. These conflicts, incomprehensible to mortal minds, reshaped entire sectors of the galaxy. The aftermath of these wars left worlds forever changed, their populations irrevocably altered by exposure to pure chaotic energies. The rise of the Inari and their quest for Inead caught Tsinch's attention. The possibility of a new Eldar god of death emerging presented both threat and opportunity. Agents of change worked tirelessly to alternately aid and hinder this fledgling faction, ensuring that their actions served the Changer's inscrutable goals. The Plague Wars, while primarily Nurgle's design, provided Tsinch with ample opportunity for meddling. As Mortarian's forces ravaged Imperial worlds, Tsinch's sorcerers wove spells of transmutation and revelation, turning the tide of battles in unexpected ways and sowing seeds of change amidst the decay. The re-emergence of Robut Gwilliman as Imperial Regent sparked a new age of innovation and reform within the Imperium. Tsinch viewed these changes with keen interest, subtly influencing the course of the Indominus Crusade to serve its own ends. The introduction of Primaris Space Marines, in particular, created ripples of change that resonated through the warp. The War of Beasts on Vigilus saw Tsench's forces play a pivotal role in destabilizing this crucial world. Gen Stealer cults, unknowingly manipulated by Tsench's agents, created the perfect conditions for widespread upheaval. The ensuing conflict drew in multiple factions, each dancing to the Changer's unheard tune. The Nachmund Gauntlet's strategic importance made it a prime target for Tsinch's machinations. As various factions vied for control of this vital warp corridor, the Architect of Fate wove intricate plots to ensure that no single power gained lasting dominance, perpetuating a state of constant flux. The fallen forge world of Sharonia became a testament to Tsinch's corruption of technology. Once a bastion of the Adeptus Mechanicus, it transformed into a nightmarish realm where machines merged with flesh and the laws of physics bent to the will of mad sorcerer engineers. Its very existence served as a lure for tech priests seeking forbidden knowledge. The Talidus War showcased Tsinch's ability to turn even the most devout servants of the Imperium. As word-bearers laid siege to shrine worlds, Tsinch's whispers found purchase in the minds of desperate defenders. The conflict concluded with entire populations embracing new, heretical faiths, their beliefs twisted to serve the changer of ways. Throughout these events, Tsinch's true goals remained elusive. Each victory, each setback seemed part of a larger design, a cosmic game of such complexity that even the most prescient seers could only glimpse fragments of its scope. The Changer of Ways continued to weave its web across time and space, each thread a potential future, each knot a nexus of possibility. As the 42nd millennium dawned, 
the galaxy found itself in a state of unprecedented flux. The barriers between realms grew ever thinner, and the winds of change blew with increasing ferocity. In this tumultuous era, Tsinch's influence reached new heights, its laughter echoing through the warp as mortals and gods alike danced to its enigmatic tune. The crystal labyrinth, Sinch's realm within the warp, pulsed with an otherworldly energy as reality itself bent and twisted. At the heart of this ever-shifting maze, a convergence of cosmic proportions unfolded, a moment that would reshape the destiny of the galaxy for millennia to come. In the material realm, the planet Xerxes Quintus trembled on the brink of apotheosis. This unremarkable imperial world, once a bastion of steadfast faith, now teetered on the precipice of madness. For centuries, Zench's agents had worked in secret, weaving a tapestry of deceit and revelation that encompassed every stratum of Xerxian society. As the planets aligned in an arcane configuration, the veil between realities grew gossamer thin. The Changer of Ways seized this cosmic conjunction, focusing its unfathomable will upon Xerxes Quintus. In an instant that stretched across eternity, the world was transformed. Cities morphed into crystalline spires that defied Euclidean geometry. The planet's population found their flesh transmuted, limbs sprouting eyes and mouths uttering prophecies in forgotten tongues. The very laws of physics buckled and warped, creating a realm where thought and matter intertwined in a dance of perpetual change. This cataclysmic event sent shockwaves through the Immaterium, creating a psychic beacon that drew the attention of forces both imperial and chaotic. The Inquisition, ever vigilant, dispatched a conclave of its most potent agents to investigate the anomaly. Among them was Inquisitor Valeriana Hex, a radical known for her unorthodox methods in combating the ruinous powers. As Hex's strike force approached Xerxes Quintus, they encountered resistance from an unexpected quarter. A fleet bearing the insignia of the Adeptus Mechanicus blockaded the system, led by Archmagos Syntheticus. The tech priest, drawn by whispers of unimaginable scientific marvels, sought to claim the transformed world for the Omnissiah's glory. The standoff between Inquisition and Mechanicus forces created an opening that Zinch's mortal pawns eagerly exploited. From the depths of the warp emerged a warband of the Thousand Suns, led by the enigmatic sorcerer Nephoros the Ever-Changing. His fleet, a nightmarish fusion of flesh and machine, slipped past the Imperial blockade under the cover of eldritch magics. On the planet's surface, reality continued to unravel. The Xerxian population, now transformed into vessels of Tsench's will, enacted rituals of mind-bending complexity. Each ceremony peeled back another layer of the universe's secrets, threatening to unravel the very fabric of existence. Inquisitor Hex, recognizing the magnitude of the threat, made a fateful decision. Invoking rarely used authority, she called upon the chamber militant of the Ordo Malaeus, the Grey Knights. A strike force of these peerless demon hunters answered her summons, their arrival heralded by a storm of silver lightning that momentarily pierced the psychic miasma engulfing Xerxes Quintus. As the Grey Knights made planetfall, they encountered a landscape that defied comprehension. Gravity shifted unpredictably, and time flowed in erratic eddies. The warrior's formidable mental conditioning was tested to its limits as they battled both demonic entities and the laws of physics themselves. Nephoros and his thousand sons met the Grey Knights in battle amid the ruins of what was once the planet's capital. Sorcery clashed with psychic might, each exchange reshaping the battlefield in ways that strained sanity. The ever-changing lived up to his name, his form shifting between states of matter as he dueled with the Grey Knight's Justicar. Meanwhile, Archmago Syntheticus led a contingent of Skitari into the transformed cities, seeking the source of the world's metamorphosis. His quest led him to an ancient vault deep beneath the planet's surface, where a relic of unfathomable power pulsed with eldritch energies. As the conflict reached its zenith, 
the true nature of Tsinch's gambit became clear. The battles raging across Xerxes Quintus were more than mere conquest. They were components of a vast, reality-altering ritual. Each death, each act of heroism or treachery, fed into a grand design that threatened to elevate the entire planet into the warp. Inquisitor Hex, piecing together fragments of lore and prophecy, realized the full scope of the catastrophe unfolding before her. The transformation of Xerxes Quintus was a fulcrum upon which the fate of the galaxy balanced. If Tsinch's plan reached fruition, it would create a permanent breach between real space and the Immaterium, unleashing a tide of change that would sweep across the stars. In a desperate gambit, Hex forged an uneasy alliance with elements of both the Mechanicus and the Thousand Suns, who had begun to grasp the true magnitude of Tsinch's schemes. Together, this unlikely coalition raced against time to unravel the sorceress bindings that anchored Xerxes Quintus to its apotheosis. As the planet trembled on the brink of transcendence, sacrifices were made, and prices beyond reckoning were paid. In the end, through an act of supreme will and sacrifice, the Alliance managed to sever the metaphysical tethers binding Xerxes Quintus to Sinch's grand design. The backlash of thwarted sorcery swept across the galaxy. Psychics and astropaths worlds away reeled from the psychic shockwave. Warp storms raged and reality buckled, but held. Xerxes Quintus, forever changed but no longer ascending, settled into an uneasy equilibrium between real space and the Immaterium. In the aftermath, as Imperial forces moved to quarantine the system, questions lingered. Had Sinch's ultimate goal been thwarted? or had the Architect of Fate achieved some hidden objective in the chaos of conflict? The transformed planet remained a locus of arcane energies, a wound in reality that refused to fully heal, a constant reminder of the changer of ways' inscrutable machinations. The reverberations of the Xerxes Quintus incident echoed across the Imperium and beyond, setting in motion a cascade of events that would reshape the balance of power in the galaxy. In the immediate aftermath, the Inquisition moved swiftly to contain the knowledge of what had transpired, but whispers of the planet's transformation spread through shadowy networks and forbidden channels. Across a thousand worlds, cult activity surged as news of Sinch's near victory inspired both fear and fervent devotion. The Ordo Hereticus found itself overwhelmed, struggling to stamp out brush fires of rebellion and heresy that seemed to ignite spontaneously in the most unexpected places. From the underhives of massive metropolises to the austere chambers of planetary governors, the lure of change and forbidden knowledge proved irresistible to many. The Adeptus Mechanicus, shaken by the revelations of Xerxes Quintus, experienced a schism within its ranks. A faction of tech priests, inspired by the melding of flesh, machine, and warp energies witnessed on the transformed world, began to pursue new avenues of research that pushed the boundaries of the Omnissiah's teachings. This group, dubbed the Transmechanicus by their detractors, operated in the shadows, their experiments blending technology with sorcery in ways that blurred the line between science and magic. In the aftermath of the conflict, the Grey Knights found their resources stretched thin. The psychic backlash had weakened the barriers between real space and the warp in several sectors, leading to a surge in demonic incursions. The chamber militant of the Ordo Malleus was forced to adopt new strategies, sometimes allying with unlikely factions to stem the tide of chaos. The Thousand Suns, despite their apparent defeat on Xerxes Quintus, gained valuable insights from the encounter. Ahriman, the arch-sorcerer of Tsinch, poured over the knowledge gleaned from the transformed world, incorporating new theorems of change into his ongoing quest to undo the rubric. His experiments led to the creation of new forms of sorcery that allowed for more subtle manipulation of reality, making the detection of Tsenchian influence even more challenging for Imperial authorities. In the realm of Ultramar, Robut Gwilliman recognized the strategic implications of the Xerxes Quintus incident. The Primarch ordered the fortification of key worlds along the borders of the Imperium Nihilus, 
anticipating that Sinch's forces would seek to exploit the weakened fabric of reality in these regions. His foresight proved crucial in the years that followed, as waves of change-aligned invaders crashed against these bulwarks. The Eldar, ever attuned to the shifting currents of fate, sensed the disturbance caused by Tsinch's gambit. Farseers of various craft worlds convened in a rare conclave, their combined prophetic abilities piecing together a fragmented vision of potential futures. What they saw spurred them to action, with Eldar forces striking at seemingly random targets across the galaxy, their actions incomprehensible to outside observers, but vital in steering fate away from catastrophic outcomes. On Terra itself, the incident had far-reaching consequences. The Adeptus Custodes, guardians of the Emperor, detected subtle changes in the psychic resonance of the Golden Throne. Whether these fluctuations were a result of the Emperor's reaction to the threat or a more sinister influence remained a topic of fierce debate among the highest echelons of Imperial leadership. The Inquisitor who had led the charge against Sinch's forces on Xerxes Quintus, Valeriana Hex, found herself at the center of a political maelstrom. Her actions, while ultimately saving the Imperium from a catastrophic incursion, had required collaboration with heretical forces. A tribunal was convened to judge her fate, the proceedings becoming a battleground for competing philosophies within the Inquisition regarding the lengths to which one might go to combat the ruinous powers. In the warp, the aftermath of Tsinch's gambit created ripples that affected the great game played between the Chaos Gods. Nurgle, sensing an opportunity in the wake of his rival's setback, launched a series of plagues designed to target those worlds most affected by the psychic backlash. Korn, enraged by the sorcerous nature of the conflict, spurred his followers to even greater acts of bloodshed, targeting psychers and sorcerers with particular fury. Slanesh, ever the opportunist, reveled in the existential dread and desperate hope that permeated the aftermath finding new avenues to corrupt those seeking solace from the encroaching madness. The Tao Empire, observing the turmoil engulfing their neighbors, accelerated their expansion efforts. Their water-cast diplomats, skilled in exploiting division and uncertainty, found fertile ground for their message of unity under the greater good. Several human worlds, disillusioned with the Imperium's inability to protect them from the horrors of chaos, turned to the Tau for protection, further complicating the political landscape of the Eastern Fringe. In the depths of space, tendrils of the Tyranid hive mind altered their course, drawn by the psychic beacon of turmoil emanating from the regions affected by Tsench's failed ritual. The shift in the Great Devourer's path set the stage for conflicts that would engulf entire sectors, as Imperial forces found themselves fighting a multi-front war against both Chaos and Xenos threats. The Necrons, long enemies of the Warp and its denizens, took note of the weakened barriers between realities. Dynasties that had lain dormant for millennia awakened, their cryptex working tirelessly to develop new technologies to exploit and seal these breaches. Their efforts led to clashes with both Chaos forces and the Adeptus Mechanicus, as all sides sought to claim the secrets of manipulating the veil between worlds. As the ripples of the Xerxes Quintus incident spread across the galaxy, one truth became evident to those with the wit to see it. The balance of power had shifted. The forces of order and chaos found themselves locked in an ever more complex dance, with the fate of reality itself hanging in the balance. And through it all, the laughter of Tsinch echoed in the minds of psychers and sorcerers, a reminder that even in apparent defeat, the architect of fate's plans unfold in ways beyond mortal comprehension. In the wake of the Xerxes Quintus incident, the arsenal of Tsinch's followers evolved in ways that defied conventional understanding. Sorcery and technology merged in unholy unions, giving rise to weapons and tactics that challenged the very fabric of reality. The Thousand Suns, ever at the forefront of arcane innovation, developed rituals that allowed them to manipulate probability itself. Their sorcerer lords could now bend the laws of cause and effect, creating temporal loops that trapped their enemies in endless cycles of futility. 
These Mobius incantations proved devastating on the battlefield, as entire squadrons of Imperial forces found themselves reliving the same moments of defeat ad infinitum. Cultists of Tsench began wielding flux staves, artifacts that channeled the raw energy of change. These weapons could transmute matter at a whim, turning armor into water or flesh into crystal. The unpredictable nature of these staves made them as dangerous to their wielders as to their targets. But the promise of power drew countless acolytes willing to risk oblivion for a chance at ascension. The disciples of Tsinch perfected the art of mimetic warfare, crafting sigils and utterances that could overwrite the very thoughts of their foes. These psychic viruses spread through vox channels and data nets, corrupting machine spirits and organic minds alike. Entire planetary defense systems fell silent as their operators succumbed to these invisible assaults, their consciousness rewritten to serve the changer of ways. Xanxian daemon engines underwent grotesque metamorphoses, their forms shifting between states of matter as they advanced across the battlefield. These protean obliterators could adapt to any environment or threat, their weapons and armor reconfiguring in real time to exploit the weaknesses of their opponents. The Lords of Change, greatest of Sinch's demons, mastered the ability to create reality rifts, tears in space-time that could swallow entire armies. These portals not only banished their victims to the swirling chaos of the warp, but also allowed Sinchion forces to strike at multiple points across a planet simultaneously, confounding traditional defense strategies. Sorcerer tech marines, renegades who blended the lore of the Adeptus Mechanicus with Tsenchian sorcery, crafted paradox engines. These arcane devices generated fields of distorted causality, where effects could precede causes. Within these zones, bolter shells might strike their targets before being fired, and the dead could rise to fight before falling in battle. The Cult Mechanicus Splinter Faction, known as the Transmechanicus, developed flux core reactors, power sources that drew energy directly from the ever-changing currents of the warp. These reactors enabled the creation of vehicles and war machines that could phase in and out of reality, becoming intangible to conventional weapons while delivering devastating attacks. Zenchion Biomancers perfected the art of chimeric grafting, creating hybrid warriors that combined the strengths of multiple species. These monstrosities could alter their genetic structure at will, adapting to overcome any obstacle or resistance they encountered. The Thrall Masters of Tsinch, specialists in mental domination, refined their craft to create puppeteer swarms, clouds of microscopic psychic entities that could infiltrate the nervous systems of their victims. Once infected, these unfortunate souls became unwitting sleeper agents, their actions controlled by distant sorcerers to sow chaos behind enemy lines. Oracles of Sinch harnessed the power of prophecy to create destiny bombs, weapons that could detonate across multiple potential futures simultaneously. These temporal explosives could erase individuals or even entire bloodlines from history, their effects rippling backward and forward through time. The Cult of the Scheming Feather, a sect devoted to Tsinch's avian aspect, developed murmuration missiles. These living weapons took the form of flocks of metallic birds that could reconfigure their formation mid-flight to overcome any defense, guided by a collective intelligence that anticipated and adapted to countermeasures. Tsenchion alchemists concocted transmutative toxins, substances that could rewrite the atomic structure of their targets. Exposure to these agents could turn living flesh to gold or render the strongest fortifications as fragile as glass, making conventional armor and defenses obsolete. The scions of contradiction, elite warriors in service to Tsinch, wielded paradox blades, weapons forged from crystallized impossibilities. These swords could sever the threads of fate binding their victims, consigning them to non-existence or trapping them in states of quantum uncertainty. Warpsmith covens dedicated to Tsinch created labyrinth generators, devices that could reshape the topology of the battlefield itself. These machines warped space into impossible geometries, creating ever-shifting mazes that confounded enemy movements and logic engines alike. The Apostles of Flux 
Cinch's chosen psychers mastered probability storms, psychic techniques that manipulated the likelihood of events on a massive scale. Within these tempests of chance, the improbable became certain and the inevitable could be averted, making every moment a roll of cosmic dice. As these esoteric technologies and tactics proliferated, the art of warfare underwent a paradigm shift. Traditional military doctrine proved woefully inadequate against foes who could rewrite reality on a whim. The Imperium and its allies found themselves in an arms race against an enemy whose weapons defied the very laws of nature, forcing them to adapt or face annihilation in a galaxy where change itself had become the ultimate weapon. Magnus the Red, Primarch of the Thousand Suns, stands as a tragic figure in the annals of the Imperium. Once a loyal son of the Emperor, his insatiable thirst for knowledge led him down a path of damnation. Now, as an ascended demon prince of Cinch, Magnus embodies the duality of enlightenment and ruin. His mastery over the warp allows him to reshape reality with a thought, making him one of the most formidable psychers in existence. Ahriman, chief librarian of the Thousand Sons, remains driven by his quest to undo the rubric that turned his brothers to dust. His relentless pursuit of arcane lore has made him both revered and feared across the galaxy. Ahriman's schemes span millennia, each setback merely a stepping stone in his grand design to master the warp and restore his legion. Kairos Fate Weaver, the Oracle of Sinch, possesses the unique ability to see all possible futures simultaneously. This gift, however, comes at the cost of madness, as Kairos's two heads constantly war with each other, one speaking truth and the other lies. His prophecies, when deciphered, can alter the course of entire civilizations. The Changeling, a shape-shifting demon of Sinch, delights in sowing discord and confusion. Its ability to assume any form makes it the perfect infiltrator and saboteur. Legends speak of the Changeling sparking wars between worlds with nothing more than a few well-placed words and timely impersonations. Zirat, the crystalline sorcerer, emerged in the aftermath of the Xerxes Quintus incident. Once a humble scribe, Zeratp's body and mind were transformed by exposure to pure warp energy. Now, his flesh is living crystal, constantly shifting and refracting light in impossible ways. Zeratp's unique connection to the warp allows him to perceive and manipulate the underlying code of reality itself. Lord Cypher, the enigmatic fallen Dark Angel, plays a role that defies simple categorization. While not explicitly aligned with Cinch, his actions often serve the changer of Wei's agenda, whether intentionally or not. Cypher's true motives remain a mystery, but his ability to appear at pivotal moments in history suggests a deeper connection to the currents of fate. Salandri Veilwalker, a Harlequin shadow seer, stands as a counterpoint to Cinch's machinations. Her mastery of the webway and ability to navigate the strands of fate make her a key player in the Eldar's efforts to thwart the ruinous powers. Salandri's cryptic performances on the galactic stage often conceal actions that ripple through time and space. Inquisitor Covenant, once a staunch Puritan, found his worldview shattered by revelations gleaned during the Xerxes Quintus incident. Now walking a razor's edge between radicalism and heresy, Covenant seeks to understand and counter Cinch's influence by delving into forbidden lore. His actions, while aimed at protecting humanity, often blur the lines between defender and transgressor. The blue scribes, Cinch's twin demons Patarix and Siratp, embody the Chaos God's obsession with knowledge. One transcribes every spell uttered in the galaxy, while the other can cast any spell but cannot remember it. Together, they represent the power and peril of unfettered access to information, Mephiston, chief librarian of the Blood Angels, stands as one of the Imperium's most potent psychers. His journey through death and rebirth has granted him unprecedented control over his psychic abilities. Mephiston's power and insight make him a vital bulwark against Cinch's incursions, though some whisper that his mastery over the warp may come at a hidden cost. Azek Ahriman's Rubrikai, 
The dust-filled armor of the Thousand Sons serve as a grim reminder of the price of hubris. These automatons, animated by sorcery, are immune to psychic assaults and possess a fraction of their former skill. The silent legions of the Rubrikai form the backbone of Tsinch's mortal armies. Scarbrand the Exiled One, while a demon of corn, plays an unwitting role in Zinch's schemes. His uncontrollable rage and propensity for indiscriminate slaughter often serve to destabilize situations in ways that ultimately benefit the changer of ways. Zinch's manipulation of Scarbrand showcases the god's ability to turn even its rival's champions to its advantage. Vizarch, the Sword of Inead, represents a wild card in the cosmic game. As a key figure in the Inari's quest to fully awaken their god of death, Vizarch's actions have far-reaching consequences that ripple through the warp. Zinch views the Inari with a mixture of curiosity and concern, seeing in them both a potential threat and an opportunity for unprecedented change. Belakor, the first demon prince, though not aligned with any single chaos god, often finds his complex schemes intersecting with those of Tsinch. The interplay between Belakor's machinations and the Changer's grand designs creates a labyrinth of plots within plots that confounds even the most prescient seers. The Crimson King, an aspect of Magnus that embodies his noblest qualities, exists as a psychic echo trapped within the warp. This fragment of the Primarch's essence occasionally manifests to aid those who oppose chaos, creating a paradoxical situation where Magnus works against his own apparent interests. The Crimson King's appearances add an element of unpredictability to Tsinch's carefully laid plans. Ephrael Stern, the Demonifuge, stands as a unique anomaly in the battle against chaos. Her mysterious origins and unparalleled ability to resist and nullify warp energies make her both a valuable asset and a potential threat to all factions. Zinch's forces view Stern with a mixture of fascination and dread, recognizing in her the potential to upset the delicate balance of power in the galaxy. These individuals, each wielding power capable of shaping destiny, dance to the tune of an unseen composer. Their actions, whether in service of Zinch or in opposition to its will, weave a tapestry of fate that spans the galaxy. As pawns and players in the great game, they embody the ever-shifting nature of existence, their triumphs and tragedies echoing through eternity in the laughter of the god of change. The labyrinthine schemes of Tsench stretch across time and space, weaving a tapestry of enigmas that confound even the most astute minds. At the heart of these mysteries lies the question of the changer's true nature and ultimate goal. Is Zinch a singular entity with a grand design or a collective consciousness born from the psychic emanations of countless races? The answer remains elusive, shifting like quicksilver with each new revelation. One of the most perplexing riddles surrounds the crystal labyrinth itself. This ever-changing realm defies conventional physics, its corridors twisting through dimensions beyond mortal comprehension. Some theorize that the labyrinth is not merely Tsenche's domain, but a physical manifestation of its consciousness. Others posit that it serves as a vast calculation engine, processing infinite potential futures to divine the optimal path of change. The true extent of Tsenche's influence over fate remains a subject of fierce debate among scholars and seers alike. While its ability to manipulate probability is well documented, the limits of this power are unknown. Can Zinch truly see all possible futures, or is its foresight limited by the chaotic nature of its own essence? The paradox of a god of change with perfect precognition continues to baffle theologians and heretics alike. The relationship between Zinch and the other chaos gods presents another layer of complexity. While often portrayed as rivals in the great game, some whisper of a deeper conspiracy. Could the eternal conflict between the ruinous powers be an elaborate ruse, orchestrated by Zinch to maintain a state of perpetual change? The notion that even gods might be unwitting pawns in the architect of fate's grand design sends shivers through the warp itself. 
The nature of the Blue Scribe's endless task raises questions about the fundamental nature of knowledge in the 41st millennium. As they transcribe every spell ever uttered, do they create a compendium of ultimate power or a prison of predestination? The implications of a finite number of possible incantations challenge our understanding of free will and creativity in a universe governed by immutable laws. The rubric of Ahriman, intended to save the Thousand Suns from mutation, instead transformed most into dust-filled automatons. Yet this catastrophic failure aligned perfectly with Sinch's ethos of change and transformation. Was Ahriman's spell doomed from the start, or did Sinch intervene to ensure a more intriguing outcome? The line between failure and success blurs when viewed through the lens of the God of Change. The true purpose of the Crystal Staff of Tzinch, wielded by the mightiest Lords of Change, remains shrouded in secrecy. While its power to alter reality is undeniable, some theorize that each use of the staff reshapes the wielder as much as the target. Could this artifact be a tool for Tzinch to evolve its own servants, or perhaps a key to unlocking a transformation of cosmic proportions? The concept of the Endless Cycle presents a paradox central to Tsinch's nature. If change is constant and inevitable, does true change ever occur, or is the universe locked in a loop of predictable unpredictability? This philosophical conundrum challenges the very foundation of Tsinch's existence and purpose. The origin of the Chaos Gods themselves remains one of the greatest mysteries in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. While often attributed to the turbulent emotions of mortal races, some heretical texts suggest a more complex genesis. Could Zench, the embodiment of change and evolution, have played a role in the birth of its fellow gods? The implications of such a theory are staggering, hinting at a level of manipulation beyond even the most paranoid imaginings. The true nature of Magnus the Red's fragmented psyche poses intriguing questions about the limits of identity and consciousness. With aspects of the Primarch scattered across reality and the warp, which, if any, can claim to be the real Magnus. This existential puzzle mirrors Tsinch's own mercurial nature, blurring the lines between unity and multiplicity. The phenomenon of warp echoes, where events in real space create ripples in the immaterium and vice versa, hints at a deeper connection between thought and reality. Some radical theorists propose that the entire material universe might be a psychic projection of the warp, with Zench serving as the grand architect of this cosmic illusion. While dismissed by most as heretical ravings, the idea persists in the darkest corners of forbidden lore. The concept of paradox weapons, artifacts that violate causality itself, raises questions about the fundamental nature of time in the 41st millennium. If such weapons can affect the past from the future, does free will truly exist, or is every action predetermined in an endless loop of cause and effect? The philosophical implications of such technology challenge our very understanding of reality and agency. The true purpose of the Black Library, the repository of all Al-Dari knowledge about chaos, remains a tantalizing mystery. While ostensibly a weapon against the ruinous powers, some whisper that its very existence serves Tsinch's agenda by concentrating so much knowledge in one place. Could the entire concept of the Black Library be a long con by the Changer of Ways, setting the stage for the ultimate act of revelation or obfuscation? As these enigmas intertwine and multiply, one truth becomes clear. In the realm of Tsinch, every answer spawns a thousand new questions. The pursuit of knowledge becomes a Ouroboros of inquiry, each revelation clouding as much as it illuminates. In this endless dance of mystery and discovery, perhaps we glimpse the true essence of the architect of fate, a being that embodies the very concept of enigma, forever unknowable, forever changing, and forever spurring the minds of mortals and immortals alike to reach for understanding just beyond their grasp. As the tapestry of fate unfurls across the millennia, the influence of Tsinch reverberates through the cosmos, leaving an indelible mark on the Warhammer 40,000 universe.
the changer of ways, ever present yet eternally elusive, continues to shape the destiny of countless worlds and civilizations, its grand design incomprehensible to mortal minds. In the wake of the Cicatrix Maledictum's formation, reality itself trembles on the brink of unraveling. The Great Rift stands as a testament to the power of change, a cosmic wound that defies healing and reshapes the very fabric of the galaxy. As warp storms rage and time flows erratically, the barriers between Materium and Immaterium grow ever thinner, creating a landscape ripe for Tsinch's machinations. The Imperium of Man, once a bastion of order and stagnation, finds itself in a state of unprecedented flux. The return of Roboot Gwilliman and the introduction of Primaris Space Marines represent a paradigm shift that echoes Tsinch's ethos of evolution and transformation. As the Imperium adapts to survive in this new era, it unwittingly dances to the tune of the very chaos it seeks to resist. Across the stars, cults dedicated to Tsinch flourish in the shadows, their influence spreading like a virus through the cracks in Imperial society. Each revelation, each whispered secret, serves as a catalyst for change, toppling regimes and birthing new orders in an endless cycle of creation and destruction. The boundaries between heresy and innovation blur, challenging the very foundations of imperial doctrine. The Adeptus Mechanicus, once steadfast in its adherence to ancient protocols, finds itself at a crossroads. The necessity for advancement in the face of new threats wars with millennia of tradition, creating schisms that threaten to tear the organization apart. In this crucible of conflicting ideologies, Tsinch's influence seeps in, pushing the boundaries of what is possible and blurring the line between technology and sorcery. Among the Xenos races, the ripples of change are no less profound. The Ildari, their fate forever intertwined with the machinations of chaos, walk a precarious path between extinction and rebirth. The rise of Inead offers a glimmer of hope, yet the very act of creating a new god plays into Tsinch's hands, adding another layer of complexity to the cosmic game. The Necrons, awakening to a galaxy vastly changed, find their ancient technologies and eldritch sciences challenged by the fluid nature of reality in the wake of the Great Rift. As they strive to re-establish their empire, they inadvertently become pieces on Sanchez's chessboard, their actions sending ripples through time and space in ways they cannot foresee. Even the Tyranid Hive Mind, supposedly immune to the temptations of chaos, faces an unprecedented challenge. As it encounters worlds touched by Tsenche's influence, the very essence of evolution, the Tyranid's greatest strength, becomes a double-edged sword. The potential for chaos to infect the Hive Mind itself looms as a threat that could reshape the nature of this extragalactic predator. The Tao Empire, in its rapid expansion and technological advancement, embodies change in a form that both mirrors and challenges Saint's influence. Their philosophy of the greater good, while anathema to chaos, creates ripples in the warp that the architect of fate is all too eager to exploit. The question of whether the Tao's destiny is of their own making or part of a grander design adds another layer to the cosmic mystery. As psychic awakening sweeps across the galaxy, touching species both known and yet undiscovered, the potential for change reaches unprecedented heights. Each newly awakened psyker becomes a conduit for Tsinch's influence, a beacon of possibility in a sea of entropy. The very nature of reality becomes malleable, shaped by the collective will and fears of countless sentient minds. The long war, waged by the forces of chaos against the Imperium, enters a new phase. What was once a straightforward conflict for dominion becomes a complex dance of ideology and transformation. Victory, in the traditional sense, becomes an outdated concept as the true battle shifts to the realm of ideas and the very definition of existence itself. In this new paradigm, the lines between victor and vanquished, creation and destruction, order and chaos blur beyond recognition. The ultimate victory of Tsinch may not lie in the conquest of the material realm, but in the fundamental restructuring of reality itself.
As the universe teeters on the brink of unimaginable change, one truth becomes clear. The only constant is change itself. Yet, in this maelstrom of transformation and uncertainty, hope persists. For in the heart of change lies the potential for redemption, for evolution beyond the constraints of current understanding. The future of the Warhammer 40,000 universe remains unwritten, a canvas of infinite possibilities where even the darkest fates can be reforged in the fires of determination and will. As we stand on the precipice of a new age, watching the grand tapestry of fate unfurl before us, we are reminded that in the realm of Tsinch, every ending is but a new beginning. The story of the galaxy, of humanity, and of reality itself continues to evolve, each twist and turn a brushstroke in the ever-changing masterpiece of existence. And through it all, the laughter of the changer of ways echoes across time and space, a reminder that, in the face of infinite change, the greatest power lies in the ability to adapt, to evolve, and to embrace the endless possibilities that lie ahead.